welcome to my Raspberry Pi portable build, but this one is a little bit different. So here's my basic concept. Hey, editing Clem of the future here. Past Clem wasn't kind enough to do a really great intro or introduction for this build. You see everyone is building portable Raspberry Pis, but I want to make something different. I want to have a immersive experience. So this is the VR Pi. I just wanted to build a normal Raspberry Pi portable, just a screen, some buttons, maybe some nifty little features that would set it apart from the other builds. But then I ran into a problem. I got this really tiny TFT screen to work. In fact, it worked okay, as long as you don't start a game. Then it gets lag. And the problem is the Raspberry Pi is fast enough, but the screen won't keep up. So you've got terrible lag, no input response, it's not good for gaming. Well, and then I thought all the others are building handhelds you can take with you, just more compact and with some additional features and all that stuff, and they all gonna play RetroPie. And I wanted to be different. So I came up with a new project. The game I liked to play most when I was younger, I was a PC guy. I played Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. What if Doom 1 or Doom 2 would have been a VR game? A VR game with the technology they had at the time. So I think a Raspberry Pi could be good enough to give you the VR experience. So here's the plan I came up with. First we need some sort of goggles you can put on your head and I thought the fastest, easiest and I think the, the way to give you the best experience for the lowest budget is use cheap FPV goggles. They usually have a receiver over here with an antenna. Usually that's the helical type, so you get good perception from every angle. Then we will use a Raspberry Pi to run the software and ensure proper head tracking. So the movement of the view will actually be controlled by your own movement in space. So we attach the Raspberry Pi right here, uh, put the battery inside, this will be the Raspberry Pi, attach some controls, maybe using the wired or wireless, depending on how we get it to run. And inside of this box will be an accelerometer. Uh, I will use the MPU6050 because I have already found the library for it. Use some uh, code to make it work. There are many approaches to this. Um, most people would use an Arduino to read the accelerometer and put that as kind of a human interface device into the Raspberry Pi. But I would like to make it a little bit different. I would like to read the MPU6050 with the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi, so I circumvent additional hardware, which may induce lag. Then I will make my own fully-fledged controller just for this game. The most important part of the build, well, it's the basic part of the build, are FPV goggles. And these FPV goggles are pretty cheap. I got them uh, off the internet. They are used and they seem to be pretty good blacked out. And they have a receiver built in, 5.8 GHz. So I will use a 5.8 GHz transmitter to get the signal into these goggles. And I made my own FPV setup back in the day. It just is a little security camera. This one is a backup camera for cars. And I have a 5.8 GHz transmitter here. This one is a 20 milliamp model and I have modded it 
So it's uh, legal to use in Austria and Germany because it's restricted to a certain band of 5.8 GHz. Let's go testing and see which of the Raspberry Pi models is suitable for the project. So let's put that into a virtual reality environment. Yes, I did run this on the Raspberry Pi 3. Here it is. Okay, so this is the Raspberry Pi 3 connected to the MPU 6050. It's already powered up. Let's try to get it in focus. On focus. Focus. You have to focus. It won't focus. Okay, it won't focus, but this is the MPU 6050, believe me. And it's connected to the GPIO pins. And what you can see here is the actual data from the module. So, if I move this module around, the data on the screen will change. Warning! Soldering live connections can be dangerous. Always make sure you never shut out any contacts, not even for a split second. And now, back to the show. I've got a first success. I wrote several test programs. I can see that the values change in a certain kind. The testing is finally over with a great result that it doesn't work. Because simulating key presses in Python works great with notepad and editors and all that kind, but does not do well with games. I first wanted to do the elegant solution with just a pie head and controlling everything on there. But now I'm going for the crude but maybe better solution with using an Arduino Micro, reading the motion detection sensor with that, porting it over USB to the Raspberry Pi and using it basically like an input device, like a mouse. <laughs> at my PC and I'm going to make a case for this part of the project. This is the control board for the virtual reality goggles so you can sense turning and movement of your head. And I'm using Tinkercut because it's easy and free. controller for my device. I built my custom controller with the use of an Arduino Micro which I just unbricked because I accidentally flashed the wrong firmware. So this device will get turned into a controller. I'm mapping some inputs to the buttons on the keyboard, map those keyboard inputs to the controllers of the game and that should give me my own individual controller. It's very important, don't forget to add escape and Y because those are the buttons needed to quit the game. <laughs> now it's time for the power supply. I tried to use these lifty little 5 volt power supplies, which worked for me in a lot of projects, but not in this one. These can't supply enough current. So I opted for an option that worked before, why change a running system, and I used this very beefy PC from an RC plane, which can provide 5 amps, and this Pretty compact two cell LiPo. It's not only about powering the Pi, we also have to power up two Arduinos and we also have to support our video transmitter, which will consume quite a bit of power. The 
media transmitter has a little disconnect on it and the other half of the disconnect gets attached to the Raspberry Pi and I will use these test pads on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi and video must be PP24 I think. So I will wire this up, put the wire around and can simply unplug it. I'm back at the PC and I have the unit here, it's fairly compact. There's a little gap in the middle, so you could make it a little bit more compact, but I think a little room for airflow might be not a bad idea. So this is the completed Raspberry Pi with the transmitter and the power supply. So now I have to figure out how these things will match up the best and then design a case for it. success we've got the display working now I have a stable connection uh, but the game won't run because it's set in the wrong resolution I played for a few moments and I felt the motion sickness right away so that's true we are so I tried to establish a solid connection between my Pi VR head and the EFPV goggles but unfortunately it always tends to be flickery and breaks up. So I think the module actually may have something wrong with it, especially the antenna, because I did crash this thing. So I will replace it with another module. I haven't crashed so far. I have to rip it out of my beloved quadcopter, which I have built a few years ago. So let's give it another shot. That's the moment of truth. I've got the Raspberry Pi with the new head and the new transmitter in the 3D printed case. Battery is attached. I have a power switch over here and now the antenna is detachable but it's very important that you will never power up any transmitter like this without the antenna because it will burn out the transmitter within seconds. Start the Pi. It flows. It is necessary to have a backup system for debugging and for changing out the game. So when you boot this up with a HDMI cable plugged into it, it will automatically use the HDMI port as a screen and not the composite out, aka the video transmitter. So you have a screen handy for debugging and for changing the games. All you have to do is change out the startup code to another game. A neat feature of the VR Pi is that you don't have to have something heavy in your hands. You can just clip this device on your belt or your pants. And so I need to make a little mounting piece for guns. Assembly time! The VR Pi has a lot of parts that are connected with cables, so I'm going to wrangle them with some cable ties and then it's ready to test it. I'm finally ready to fire this beast up. This is the main unit. This just goes on the belt. The controller plugs right into it. Next up I take my FPV goggles and put the VRPi sensor unit on it. This is for motion tracking. And it also has some plugs at the end for USB and audio because for the full immersive feeling you gotta have headphones. Let's get into the experience. <laughs> I think I accidentally got on nightmare difficulty. That's a fairly 
intense game, even on the lower settings. I tried it on Nightmare and I instantly died. And this is really fun, I have to say. It's as headache inducing as I expected. This is the VR Pi. It certainly works, it's a lot of fun and it's certainly portable, but I wouldn't recommend to play it outside unless you want to get hit by a car or something. Now for the conclusion. The main unit is pretty bulky, but I had to make it that way because this one fits a really big battery. The RF transmitter, which does 5.8 GHz signaling, takes up a lot of juice. So this one needs a pretty bulky battery. So this is a fairly thick and big unit. But it's certainly portable. You can just stick it on your belt and here you go. So I would like to make that thinner or smaller in the future. The controller is usable. It fairly works. But it's not as good as I wanted it to be. I will redo that in the future. The motion tracking part is by far the most difficult part of the project. It's using the MPU6050 gyrometer. I first tried to incorporate the MPU6050 into the Pi itself, just over GPIO. I got it to read data, I got it to do stuff, but it was very laggy and it didn't work that great. So I opted for the classic route, Arduino Micro, and make it a separate unit, which uses uh, just a standard serial connection over USB and acts like the mouse. So this one doesn't uh, replicate button pushes, it replicates the movement of the mouse, and I just had to fiddle around with the sensitivity in-game to make it move properly. If you enjoyed this video and this build and this project, please consider giving it a thumbs up, like, or whatever it is that you give on element14.com for the Hack Like Hack competition, because I really want to do this for you guys, making projects and cool videos on the Element 14 community. Enjoy some more content on Element 14, and I have to go, there's another project waiting for me. Now back to the range.